Hi, this is Pratik from Techistock and today in this video, we'll be discussing about future interface in Java and there are different types of future objects. We'll be discussing it as well with decode examples. So let's get started. So this is the agenda for this video. So first we'll go through what is meant by future and uh, what is a future object in Java and what all are different types of future interface which are available in Java and then we'll go through some of the code examples for each of them. So what is meant by future? So future represents the result of an asynchronous computation. So it's like uh, you have to do some computation but you don't have to in your main thread. You, you can do it uh, in a separate thread so once that computation is complete, you'll get a uh, you you can check whether what's the was the, what was the result of that computation. So based on that, uh, you can do your further processing. So future interface basically uh, has two main types of methods, which is get, which is used to retrieve the result of the computation, and also there's a method called cancel, which is used to cancel the computation task. So basically, if you submit any task uh, to any uh, thread, so uh, you can you can wait for that thread to complete that particular task, and after uh, that task is complete, you can use the get method to get the result of that computation, and uh, and while that computation task is running, you can even cancel it in between using the cancel method. So these are the two main methods of the future interface. And there are three uh, types of future interface uh, which we'll be discussing in this video. These are runnable future, scheduled future, and runnable scheduled future. We'll go through each of them with the code example. So let's uh, jump to the ID to go through all those code examples and see uh, what all what all future objects uh, Java offers, and uh, and we'll we'll define uh, how how all these future objects work so i have coded uh, uh, like i have examples related to all the future objects so first we'll go through uh, a simple future future object or what a future object does so uh, let me uncomment this part of the code so I'll just go through uh, what this code will do. So we are defining a callable uh, object. So, uh, so there are two types of uh, interfaces, runnable and callable. So callable interface basically defines a task which returns some results. So we are defining a callable uh, object uh, which will return uh, a result of type boolean. So it's a simple callable task which we define which will just log the statement and just will return true and then we have a uh, way we are defining the thread pool so there is a executors class basically which is used to define different types of thread pools and uh, there's uh, one of the uh, static methods which are available from that class is new fixed thread pool which basically defines a thread pool of fixed number of threads and here we are defining uh, a thread pool with uh, one thread and it basically returns you the uh, the uh, the type or the object of the type uh, executor service, and then we'll just uh, what we'll do is we'll submit uh, the callable task which we have defined earlier to this uh, thread pool. So through the submit uh, method, and this submit method will return you a future object. So basically, it will define. Uh, uh, so through using this uh, future object, we'll be able to get the computation result, and that computation result will be of type boolean. Okay, so once the uh, callable task uh, completes, uh, it will uh, using the get method on the future object, we'll be able to get the result, and and we'll be using that result to print the statement, and then ultimately we'll be shutting down the thread pool as well. So let's run this uh, part of the code.
So yeah, if you see here, uh, the callable task executes the only log statement which it has and it returns true as a result and which we uh, retrieve through the get method call on the future object and we print this statement. So this is where it is printed. Okay, so this is how the future object works. So basically we submit some task, we wait for that task to complete and how we will know that task is completed by just invoking the get method on the future object and it's a blocking method call like it will wait till the task uh, gets completed and once it is complete it will return with the result of that particular task so that was the example simple example related to future object let me comment this part and move to the next part now uh, we'll define uh, what is runnable future so let me switch to the documentation first so this is the future object interface, future interface, which we have the documentation related to the same. And this is the executors uh, class, which, which we use to define the thread pool. So this is the uh, uh, static method, which we use to create the thread pool of fixed number of threads. And in our case, it was one thread. And then we have this runnable in uh, future. So runnable future is nothing but a future that is runnable. So we can define future object uh, using two of the interfaces, which is runnable and callable. So in case of runnable, because runnable will not return you any uh, result. So we have to uh, explicitly define if, if the runnable task completes successfully, what should be the uh, return, return value? Because the task itself does not return any value. We have to explicitly define the result. But in case of say, if you're defining the future object with the callable method, uh, callable interface, which we just saw, uh, so callable uh, object will return the result, which, which we can get through the get method of the future object. So let's define uh, the runnable future object. So let's go through this code example. So uh, the runnable future uh, interface is implemented by a uh, class called future task, which you'll see in the documentation as well. So implementation class is the future task. Okay. So this is also a cancelable asynchronous computation. So we, uh, we declare a future task and uh, we uh, create an instance of this future task using the definition of the runnable uh, interface. So this is the definition of that task. So what it will do is it will only print the statement while it is running. And we also define the result. So as, as I said earlier, that runnable task does not explicitly return any result. So in order to define the successful completion of uh, the task, we specify that if the task uh, completes successfully, then we would get the result as hello from runnable. This, this string would be returned as a result. So if we go through the documentation, you'll see we are using this uh, uh, constructor to uh, construct the uh, object of the future task. So it creates the future task that will upon running, execute the given runnable and arrange that get will return the given result on successful completion. So this result which we are defining that will uh, be returned on the successful completion of the runnable task. Okay, so then we'll explicitly run this task and when then we try to get the result of that task. Okay, another example which uh, is there is using the callable uh, interface. So here we are returning, we are, we are creating a future task using the callable uh, interface. So this is this constructor which we are using. So this will return you the uh, uh, the the string hello from callable. So we'll run it explicitly and we try to get the uh, result of that task. So let's run this part of the code. So if you see here, we have a print statement from runnable. Okay, so this is uh, this is the statement which gets 
uh, executed and then we have a result being returned uh, uh, on the successful completion of this runnable task and uh, when we try to get the result we are printing that result here which is this one hello from runnable and then from the callable uh, task we are also returning a string called hello from callable and we when we try to get the result of that callable task we will get this string hello from callable so this is how the runnable future works using the future task class of class object Let's comment this part. Let's so move to the scheduled uh, feature now. So scheduled feature is something like we are we are executing some task in uh, some time in future time and uh, with some delay or at some fixed rate. So th th that is how we define the scheduled future uh, object. So scheduled future itself is an interface which is being uh, uh, implemented by the runnable scheduled future which is uh, nothing but uh, a future of the type uh, runnable so this is a scheduled future that is runnable so let's go to the code and see how how it works so let me uncomment this part of the code first <clears throat> so what we are doing is we are creating a callable task and before that we created a scheduled executor service so so uh, earlier we defined an executor service using which we using which we uh, 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 created a thread pool and uh, but in order to execute the scheduled uh, future uh, task like executing anything in future uh, we have to create a, a thread pool and that would uh, return us uh, an object of the type scheduled executor service using which we can submit those uh, scheduled future uh, a task so this is a new single thread scheduled executor single thread uh, thread pool will be uh, uh, created let me switch to the documentation for this object this state this method so what it says uh, create a single threaded executor that can schedule commands to run after a given delay or to execute periodically so this is what uh, this method is used for so it basically returns you this uh, schedule executor service interface object okay so using which will submit the uh, the, uh, the task which will run uh, in, at a fixed rate or at uh, and a future uh, and, and in a uh, periodic fashion. So, so then we just print uh, the statement just to signify that uh, we are submitting the task. Then what we do is we submit this uh, scheduled callable to this uh, executor service and we schedule it. So using the schedule method, we schedule this uh, uh, task and what we specify is we have to run this task uh, after a delay of five five seconds okay so once uh, so after five seconds it will run and uh, uh, then we try to get the uh, get the result of that callable task and we try to then print it let's run this part of the code So if you see here at 57th second we have scheduled uh, a callable task then uh, after five seconds after a gap of five or six seconds i think yeah uh, yeah there might be some delay so but uh, we have specified as five seconds so uh, after a delay of five seconds it will be it will run and uh, then uh, uh, after getting uh, we, when we try to get the uh, result of that callable task uh, we can print it using this statement so the result from callable is callable ran successful run successful this string would be returned and will be printed through this logger statement okay so 
So this was the uh, scheduled task uh, which we submitted uh, and we defined a, a callable task to define the task, uh, the scheduled future task. Then uh, there's another example. Here we are defining the schedule runnable instead of callable and so it is just simply printing this statement and not returning anything and uh, let me uncomment this yeah so uh, what we do is we print this statement and then try to schedule this task uh, using the schedule at fixed rate uh, method so what it does is it takes in the uh, argument uh, the runnable task and what will be the initial delay so after one second it will start executing and at a fixed rate of three seconds okay so let me uh, take you through the documentation what it says What it says, it creates and executes a periodic action that becomes enabled first after a given initial day. So there will be an initial delay after which it gets uh, enabled. And then subsequently with a given period that is execution will commence after initial delay and then initial day plus period and so on. So let's execute it and see how it works. So if you see after one second it gets uh, enabled and after every three seconds it will be it will be running after every three seconds so this is uh, you can say a periodic uh, execution of the task like after three sec every three seconds it will run so that is why it is named as scheduled at fixed rate okay let me stop it so let Let's comment this code now and move to the next example which would be the last example for this video so here we are doing uh, the same thing almost the same thing the minor differences uh, as compared if we compare it with the previous example so we are uh, declaring a runnable and what we are doing is we are just randomly uh, generating a delay through this uh, random uh, this r is the random object random object and we are just uh, generating the next integer uh, with the uh, max uh, bound of uh, 10 and we are just adding it to adding 2 to it so this is a random delay which we are generating and uh, but we, just to simulate that there is a delay in uh, execution of the task so the runnable task is running with the delay we'll just print we'll just print it and then the thread goes into sleep for that but that amount of uh, milliseconds and uh, uh, once this uh, delay is complete it will come out of the sleep and the execution ends so what we're doing is here we are using the schedule with fixed delay method instead of fixed rate so let's go through the documentation first so dual with fixed delay says that create and execute periodic action that becomes enabled first after given initial delay and subsequently with the given delay between the termination of one execution and commencement of next so uh, earlier one was running at a fixed rate after uh, every three seconds but this this execution the schedule with fixed delay will wait for previous execution to complete and adding the delay to the previous execution end time it will commence the next execution so let's uh, run this and see how it works so uh, first one is running with the delay of 11 11 seconds So 
next one starts at 46 so 11 was the delay plus there was a 3 second delay so this 11 plus 3 is 14 so 14 seconds get added for the next uh, start of uh, the execution then it is running with the delay of 8 seconds 8 plus 3 is 11 so next one starts at 57 then there's a delay of 7 plus 3 which is 10 so next one starts at 07 so this is how it works so it, it basically waits for the previous execution to end then it adds uh, that uh, the the delay which is mentioned in this uh, uh, argument and uh, means function argument and the next execution will start after that much delay okay so these were the different types of uh, future implementation future object implementation in java so that's it from this video uh, hope you would have liked the video and uh, i'll be bringing in uh, more videos on java and azure in future till then